Bank runs have started over the last month, and as Warren Buffett says, and a number of other people out there, this is just the beginning. I believe Jamie Dimon said this as well. We've done some videos and some articles on this, but I wanted to just explain the Silvergate SBB uh, in layman terms and more just kind of what, what's going on and what it means just from a macro. Again, what we do here is constantly looking at things from a 100,000 foot view. You're looking at things if you're in a U2 spy plane or an SR-71 Blackbird. You're in a recon uh, plane or a Chinese spy balloon if that's more your thing. So we have to be able to see things at what's going on in macros. When you zoom out, like if you if you really sit back and just think, and I mean think, just sit back, relax, get in a quiet area and just think and really zoom out. You can do all these thought experiments and really see what's going on and actually understand what's happening. And if you get back to, you know, 60, 80, 100,000 feet, you can really see the moves of the world playing out very easily and using that intuition inside of you, using your knowledge and using your intuition. So why we come in and do our market updates to see what's happening at this more of a, more of a micro level, but it's also, you know, macro as well, but just seeing the trifecta, the three global liquidity indicators, be able to see what's happened you take in the geopolitics and things that are happening. And then what the you know, things like the World Economic Forum, you know, Tavistock, you know, all these global entities, the, the WHO, the United Nations, all these entities that want to control your life and believe that they are gods and, and you are just useless eaters, as they say. You know, you understand what's happening. As I always say, you have to put your communist lenses on, your collectivist lenses on to be able to see the world very clearly from a government perspective and from a globalist entity perspective because a lot of things they do make zero sense. And many of us sit here and say, well, the heck are you doing? Well, that's because 99% of people are good and they're not thinking in evil terms or these you know psychotic terms. This is what these people do. They've grown up this way, either became that way, or they grew up in these families that thought they were gods, right? So we have to understand what's going on. And coming into a macro, I'm going on a tangent a little bit, but this is all about seeing what's happening. We're actually going to have an interview doing in a, in a few weeks with Nolan Bowerle talking about how to see through psyops and how to, you know, the world is an is a economic or um, the economy and, and money is a psychological engine. And, and Jim Rogers talks about being good at investing. You have to be good at psychology and philosophy and history. You have to be good at those things or else it's not going to make sense. A lot of what happens is not going to make any sense to you. So we have to understand this. So this dead contagion is just the tip of the iceberg. So what's going on, guys? Brandon here. Please share this out. Please, please, please. This is so important, obviously, because the algorithm hates truth. We're going to be moving to uh, different platforms. Uh, you know, one that starts with an R and it rhymes with Bumble. And we're going to be, you know, on Nostra more, which we've been on, and Zion, and Ghost, and all these decentralized platforms that are truly decentralized. Uh, I know the the Bumble rhyming one, I don't believe is decentralized, but all the other ones are. We're going to be building on those as we go forward. So there'll be more to come, and I'll let you know when that happens. But uh, we're just going to be building this world because the world does not want truth. We're in this world where truth has to be obfuscated and has to be hidden for agendas to play out. And this is how control works. This is how governments work. I mean, if you're just waking up today and you think the government and these global agencies don't want to control everything in your life, then this might not be the channel for you. You, you got a lot of work to do. You can go look through the channel here, but there's a lot of there's a lot of homework that needs to be done to catch you up to where we are in present day life. Uh, you got to start about 100 years back, 110, 120 years back. Uh, really 1848 Com Communist Manifesto, but then really probably 110 years ago, and start studying what happened, what, what has been happening. There's some incredible books, Communist, uh, The Naked Communist, the Communist Manifesto, Tragedy and Hope, Conspirators Hierarchy, and George Orwell's 1984, and Brave New World, all these, you know, Gulag Archipelago. You can see what's been happening. And if, if you understand, you take evil at its word, what they say they're going to do, you know, the tagline of, you know, you own nothing, be happy. There's way more that goes into that. Then you start seeing what's actually going on. Before we go to any further, let's go. Get, let's get into this. So, a bank run happened to us personally. This is a personal story. We raised money to buy a property. This is our family office, and what we did, and renovate it, and then refinance it with the commercial lender. We used a private money lender in order to get this done. And a year later, our promissory note was coming due, and our private money lender needed their money back. The refinance was taking a long time. This is over the last year or so because of obviously the banking things are going on in general, and things are beginning to crumble. As raises, as rises, <laughs> as rates can't can't speak. As rates kept rising so the hurdles kept coming and this is what we talk about the 10-year treasury is so important so you see the 10-year treasury rates are rising so this happens on a personal level people have variable rates or they have loans they're trying to refinance or at a global level you have company or court countries that have dollar denominated debts they then have to pay off their dollar denominated debts with a higher interest rate it's like a variable rate on a home at a personal level so these countries are having to do the same thing that's why the uk pound was collapsing that's why the sri, sri lanka was collapsing last year that's why argentina's had so many problems in venezuela 
all these countries have had so many problems because of that. Korea sending messages to the Federal Reserve here being like, you got to stop raising rates because you're about to cripple us. You're about to cripple everybody. So the commercial lender ended up denying the loan because they said the value of the property was under $100,000 and commercial lenders generally like to list, uh, lend on things for $100 million. So the $100,000 valuation was just too small for like, it was just a single family property. So they no longer wanted to do the loan. So that lender was out. And this was right about the time the same month we needed, our, our note was due, our year, 12 year, or 12 month note was up with our private money lender taking money and and creating something out of nothing, right? We, didn't, we weren't using our own money. We were using someone else's money to create money out of thin air and create an asset. It was an arbitrary rule the lender had, just kept changing because the market kept changing, simply put. This put us in a position where we then had to find other cash in our portfolio to pay off a private money lender and take the property on in full. This property is the one we are still trying to refinance now. If you follow our monthly portfolio allocation letters, which you can find in the YouTube channel, you can find in the blog, which is here that you're looking at. The link is in the description to so go check that out and our allocation monthly and how it changes and the pie charts and, and where we are and all the different assets we have and how we have 15x or our net worth over the last 10 years using this portfolio allocation strategy. I try to have more than enough in reserve to cover the debt obligations we have out just in case something like this happens. This is the first time it's ever happened to me, actually. So I've always, I've always been very conservative. I try to have these reserves so that way these things can happen and we don't miss a beat. We would have been in trouble if we couldn't meet our debt obligation by paying our private money lender back because you know, again, you could refinance or you could renegotiate the terms, but the private money lender needed that money back. They said, no, nope, sorry, I went to them and they said, nope, sorry, we need this money back because we have things that we need to do. We have stuff going on. We need this money back. So that was an option. Renegotiating the, the note was not an option. And again, that's something you can do with banks as well. You know, like like a short sale, you're negotiating with, with the bank actually and saying, hey, will you accept short selling this house and taking less? Like if I went back to the private money lender and said, hey, I'm going to give you a uh, you know, make up a number 50 grand of the 60 grand, then that'd be like a short sale in a way. So the lender has to agree to that. So renegotiations happen all the time. This is kind of like the restructuring of the world debt was happening. This is something that is being talked about, right? Because the transition is monetary system we're in bricks and the dollar and all these, you know, the special drawing rights and everything that's happening, gold standard, the Bitcoin standard. People are trying to figure out all across the world what's happening, what's going to happen, how it's going to work. Restructuring notes and debts is one of those ways that uh, these things could happen. And so this point of the story is to show you that on a personal level, what's happening on a bigger level. Sometimes the bigger level is hard to understand. And this is what is happening in the bank runs or the crypto exchanges collapsing or any of the other financial institutions you see in trouble. So the same process is playing out. We've been talking a lot over the last handful of months about Credit Suisse and Blackstone freezing withdrawals, which in translation is them not being able to meet obligations. They get to play by a different set of rules because these institutions are doing dirty work for the government and get bailed out at taxpayers' expense. I can't do that. A private citizen like myself or you doesn't have that kind of luxury. So we have to make sure that our books are balanced and I can, and I, and we can pay things off in a timely manner. The debt contagion I have been playing chicken little about for years is at our doorstep. And this is something I've been focused on and, and concerned about for years and really to my, even my short-term detriment, right? I could be further along in certain ways, but I've been preparing in the macro because I can see these things coming for 15 years. I've been able to see the writing on the wall and the, the censorship, the government takeover. You can see it because you could see you know, if you're paying attention, you can see the United Nations, you can see all these global agencies slowly taking sovereignty away from America, slowly taking sovereignty away from from individuals. And you can see this, and eventually you're the frog, the frog in the boiling pot, and you realize when you wake up when it's too late, which we're right about that point, when you realize, oh, we've been cooked. Well, we're at that point now. Robert Kiyosaki taught me that you only swing for the fences, take gambles, and really get outside your investing comfort zone when you have excessive passive cash flow above and beyond your monthly expenses. You aren't just financially free, but you are above and beyond a comfortable level. I'm not where I would like to be personally with our office. We've done very well, but my passive portfolio, my passive income is not to the place where I would like it to be. It's not where I'm comfortable. Again, like I said, I'm very conservative. So it's not a place I would like to be before I take massive uh, you know, risk or, or gambles or educated risk. So I don't pretend to be shooting the moon because I'm not where I would like to be comfortably let, comfortably yet. And everyone's different. Everyone's going to have a different area where they're comfortable, right? I also see the problems in the legacy fiat system that I cannot unsee, which I just talked about a minute ago. Admittedly, this makes it extremely hard to go into the markets and dump cash around knowing at any minute credit markets could freeze up 
and credit cards and gas pumps could stop working. It won't be the first time and sadly won't be the last time this happens. I, along with many others, have been warning for years, albeit like an idiot, like I mentioned again, saying things would implode, even worse than 2008. And we've looked like idiots over the last 10 years. And so, oh, things are going up, which ironically, they haven't. The currency that's been printed has obfuscated the reality that stocks, real estate, are just going sideways. They've just held, held serve over the last 10, 15 years. And they've kept up with money printing or currency printing. That's it. They haven't outgained. The only thing that's outgained truly, truly is Bitcoin. It's massively outgained the currency printing. The Federal Reserve has done a remarkable job at making me look like a moron with unlimited currency, currency printing and basically zero interest rate policy or ZERP over the past decade. They can kick the can down the road as far as the eye can see, but eventually the road does come to an end. It does. Hey, I'm right until, or I'm wrong until I'm right. So any of the Back to the Future fans, Back to the Future 3 here, the tracks are out. The tracks are out ahead. I'm not saying the entire system will blow up this week, but I'm wrong until I'm right. Like I mentioned, again, it will most likely coincide with a monetary transition. Maybe not a currency, reserve currency transition or death of the dollar scenario, but most likely will result in the overlords trying to transition everyone into their digital dollar or Fed coin or Fed now, which we call slavery coin here. Between the financial system literally hanging by a thread, world wars and governments all around the world who hate their citizens, do you really blame me for feeling this way? I know their end game. So, they, so that doesn't help me either because it's not conducive to any of us building wealth. The conspirators hierarchy, tragedy and hope, creature from Jekyll Island, the naked communist, secrets of the Federal Reserve, Communist Manifesto, many, many others have outlined the exact plans that the globalists have in store for the peasants, the useless eaters. As Klaus says, you will own nothing and be happy. And you can take it from his book, right? The Great Narrative and the Great Reset. These people have talked about it. These people are telling you what they're doing, what they want to do. Building a portfolio outside the unstable matrix. Bitcoin, gold, silver, food storage, water filtration, energy capacity, guns, ammo, land, gardening, and building a community, number one, are the biggest topics we have talked about for years here and on our YouTube channel and the blog. The more independent and resilient we, be, we can become, the less we need to depend and fear government and others, and the more robust the system becomes, the less garbage we're voting for. Not to mention the hope and the confidence you gain by preparing. It is said during the German Weimar Republic hyperinflation that gold went from equaling one German mark to being able to buy one whole block of commercial real estate. Think about that. This process will play out again with Bitcoin demonetizing all assets in the coming years and gold and silver getting a bump as well, for sure. Best part is no one can take either of these things from you. I don't like stocks or paper assets that have counterparties or companies and account brokerages that you have to trust a third party to unlock for you. Absolutely not. You know, maybe in a few years, five years, 10 years, 20 years, whenever, whenever the dust is settled and we have, you know, these things built on, you know, Bitcoin standard or, you know, something or rules without rulers and things, these third parties we don't have to trust, then you know what? I'll, hey, great. I'll be all in for this stuff. As Warren Buffett said, the number one rule of money is don't lose money. Not a situation I would like to be in when my government and the companies they are in bed with are at odds with me and civil unrest is on the rise. It's only just beginning. What is a bank run? We have a fractional reserve system, meaning every time you put a dollar in the bank, in deposit, we can lend out 90 cents or maybe the entire dollar back out to other people in order to make money on the loan you gave them. And yes, it is a loan. Once you give your money to the bank, it's legally not yours anymore. You give them full ownership of your dollar and they can pretty much do whatever they wish with it. They might be giving you 0.01% interest while they get to loan it out at 5 to 7% for a car or home loans and keep the spread. This is how banks and lenders make money. Pay short and lend long. Fractional reserve lending is how 90% of the currency in the system about is created. It's just digits in the computer. They don't have to print it anymore. Because of this process, banks have a little bit of vault cash, which is physical cash they actually keep for you if you want to come take something out, which is the actual dollars there, and a whole lot of bank credit, which is just those numbers in the computer that are loaned out generally to someone else, right? So when you and I come back to get our dollars, this is the part, and the vault cash is used up, and there's only bank credit left, we don't get anything. The bank is insolvent because they cannot meet their obligations. We also just showed how FDIC recently came in and said there would be bail, bank bail-ins where they just skim out of people's accounts, whether they were above or below the insurance amount of 250. So the other thing we kind of learned too is that they were going to try to roll the bail-ins and that lasted about a day or two. And then by Sunday night, Yellen, they came out and said, hey, oh, no, we're bailing everyone out. We're bailing everyone out. So the, the apathy or the attitude for it wasn't even good enough to keep with the bail-ins. That's how the fervor, and this, is, this goes back to, 
I have a theory, and I've said here before, I do believe that we won't see foreclosures. Not to say that we won't have foreclosures. I think we're going to have a lot of mass problems in the coming years. But the foreclosures we saw 15 years ago, it won't be the same way it happens because now we have social media. So can you imagine people running down the road Facebook living or Instagram living or TikToking the Johnson family getting booted from their home. I had to move family members out of their homes 15 years ago when I was leaving Michigan State University. I had to do that physically. I didn't understand the time, but that was my wake up call when I dove down the road, went from politics and crossed the chasm into money and investing and business and started to just go full throttle into that world. Created my first business right after that in, in network marketing actually, then got into real estate. And it was the best decision I ever made, but I didn't understand it. And I, looking back, I realized, oh my goodness, you know, people that I loved were in the housing industry, or whatever, and were crushed by idiotic policies from our government. And the banks handling that and playing it out for the government. So there, there's so many tangents we could go down. But we've, I've been talking about this for a long time. That this, this crisis, this is where I believe you'll own nothing, and be happy. So they'll, they'll come in and say, hey, you know what? We're not going to kick you out of your home because we don't want the bad press. We don't want people riding the streets and revolting and overthrowing our power. So you know what? Your house is worth 250, we'll give you 300. All you gotta do is stay in your house and then download this app. It's called FedNow, it's called Slavery Coin, or it's called you know our CBDC coin, Central Bank Digital Currency. And all you have to do is download it, that's it. And agree to the terms, which will track you. We're not gonna tell you that, but we'll track you. And you're not. we know you're not gonna read the terms. And we'll deposit that extra 50 grand it's not, it's only worth 250, but we'll give you 300. The extra 50 grand will be in your account for you. Man, it's gonna be tough to say no, isn't it? It's gonna be very tough to say no to that. So slavery or freedom. So what's the, what's the price? Everyone's got a price, right? What's the price? What if it's a hundred? What if it's 200? What if it's $500,000? What will they, they can print digits in a computer. They will buy, they will try to buy everyone's freedom. They will try to buy it all and control you. Million, 10 million, 100,000. 10,000, everyone's gonna have their own price, and I guarantee you that's all gonna start dominoing. It'll start taking advantage of the poor and the middle class first, and it'll work its way up. That is my prediction, and this gives a little little segue into it. Not to mention they only have, the FDIC, $125 billion in assets to cover $9 trillion in liabilities. So anyone with simple math can do the calculation that they can't make good on nearly any of their promises. You better hope your bank collapses first and you get most of your money back before the rest of the system fails. And again, this is my little PS, stay strong. This is my little ending note. Do not bail these people out. And, and again, I know we are, we were. This is exactly how these problems start and perpetuate in the first place. This is how people keep getting rug pulled and lose their wealth. This is why everything we buy and consume constantly costs more. Stop the madness. And selfishly, people like myself, and, and I'm sure you and others have patiently waited to buy up the market as a responsible actor in the system, constantly getting flushed to the side as bad actors, investors, zombie businesses who can't afford the interest on their debt are allowed to be propped up and rewarded to provide terrible products and services and rewarded for it. Think about that, rewarded and bailed out. You think about this airline, same thing. Airlines getting bailed out. Why do you think they're, because if people couldn't travel, they'd flip out, they'd lose their mind. People le losing some semblance of like, whoa, what I had and I could travel, I could do these things. People lose their minds. So that's why the government owns the airlines now, a lot of the airlines, because it's like, oh, we can't stop that. Oh, we can't stop the sports. Can't stop the sporting events. Got to make sure the sporting events keep running. Even though there's no one in the stadium, uh, we got to get all the sports guys there, though, because uh, we need no unrest. We got to make sure people have their beer and their pot and they can sit in their house and watch sports. Okay, cool. We got everyone off the streets. Whew, we just got, just got, <laughs> just escaped that revolution. Wow, we just escaped that overthrow of the government. But seriously, it's enough. Enough. Merit must take its rightful place in free markets and show true price discovery and flush the garbage out of the system. And how does anyone learn or grow otherwise? This is the problem. When we continually kick the can down the road, we get higher cost of living and lower living standards. This is the, this is the frog in the boiling pot. If we just had you know, taken our pills once or twice, and this would have been done a long time ago, we would have the forest fire come through, burn everything, we'd have a new growth, we'd actually have good, strong, solid growth. But we don't do that. We keep kicking the can down the road, we make things perpetually worse, we have a worse culture rot, 
and decay, more suicides, more mental issues, more drug problems, worse people being voted in as politicians. This just cycle just perpetuates. Mass shootings, this is going to continue to happen. All this will continue happening because we choose not to be accountable, responsible citizens and take the red pill and take our actual pill and say, you know what? This is going to hurt, but I got to get through it. I got to just do it. I got to just get it over with. We got to, we got to, we had the forest fire come through and we got to regrow everything properly. If we don't allow the forest fire to burn, how does new growth take its place at the end of the day? It's period. I appreciate you coming to my TED talk. Let me know your thoughts. I'd love to know your thoughts. This is stuff that I've been thinking about for decades. You can see it coming. I've been able to see it coming. It's not hard, but the problem is most people are so caught up in their jobs. They're so caught up in fantasy sports and drugs, legal and illegal life, family, that we very rarely step. This is why you know, I, I try to pray and meditate every morning, do a miracle morning, really thinking about these things, pondering these things for two decades since I was literally in middle school and high school, thinking about these things. Where are we going? What are we doing? What do I want to do with life? What are we, what are we all going to do with our lives? What is the government doing? Why are we going this way? What are my kids going to do? What are my grandkids going to do? What is life going to look like? These are things that human beings should be thinking about, pondering and planning. And instead we are caught up in chewing gum for the ears, chewing gum for the, the eyes, as, as Brian Tracy says, just listening to music all day long, watching the Kardashians, playing fantasy sports, and just this mindless entertainment that just gets us away from actual reality and actual life. It's sad. But that's the life we live right now because of a broken currency, because of a broken money. So I appreciate you for coming to this TED Talk. Please share us out because the algorithm hates truth. This is not financial advice. It's freedom advice. And please question everything with boldness, even the existence of God himself. I appreciate you, and I'll see you on the next one.